Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Ripple Taps, former Obama White House official to head US public policy, guys. Ripple's doing it again. This one coming from XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. So, they have hired Lauren Belive, who at one time worked at the White House under President Barack Obama. She joined Ripple as the head of US public policy and government. So, again, with these heavy hitters uh, in important roles, impressive roles in government, Ripple is not backing down. Here's a quote. My role will be to lead our engagement in Washington and nationally, ensuring that we are not only part of the conversation, but driving it forward with clarity and purpose, Belive said Tuesday as a believer. Belive said Tuesday on LinkedIn. With regulatory landscapes evolving, it's paramount that we advocate for these policies uh, that not only support the crypto industry, but also the countless individuals and businesses that could benefit from these advancements, she continued. Uh, the crypto industry has been hit quite hard. If you guys didn't catch my video this morning, Chase Bank, well, I mean, this was in the UK, but Chase Bank said they're no longer going to support uh, crypto payments for their customers. And I'll link that video up here if you guys didn't catch it. Unfortunate for Chase customers, of course, JP Morgan Chase all won. Of course, we know uh, the connection there to Ethereum, ETHgate. So maybe, possibly, probably... They have something else up their sleeve. Belive was most recently Director of Government Affairs at SoftBank Group International. And before that, she was the head of U.S. government relations at Zoom. Uh, she started her career at the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, which was then chaired by Representative Henry Waxman. At the Obama White House, she worked in the Office of Legislative Affairs. She also previously worked on Obama's campaign, according to her LinkedIn profile. But with regards to crypto advocacy, okay, she could and will, I have a feeling, get their foot in the door in D.C. and, uh, you know, really help push the narrative along. I mean, there are so many companies in the U.S. that are saying, boy, had we known that this was going to be the case in the United States, we would not have stayed here. And so uh, I'm feeling like a lot of these cryptocurrency companies that felt like they were working under uh, reasonable legislators uh, are now second guessing that. And so, uh, you know, hiring a policy director linked directly to President Barack Obama, I don't think necessarily hurts. Anyway, wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for posting that. Michael Branch also coming out with this announcement, guys. MoneyGram has officially said that they plan to launch a non custodial crypto wallet. So, this is big news because uh, we know the MoneyGram connection to Ripple basically dissolved once the Ripple SEC lawsuit was announced. So now MoneyGram, though, they're officially announcing plans to launch a non-custodial wallet. They did this in a press release. MoneyGram International is a well-known American company specializing in international peer-to-peer -peer money transfers. Uh, they were founded in 1998, uh, headquartered in Dallas. They got a lot of employees, 2,300 direct employees and uh, 347 offices worldwide. It has also entered the crypto sector for years now, thanks to the partnership with Ripple that was initiated back in 2019 and ended once the SEC stepped in. And then they later partnered with Stellar. So this is where it gets interesting, because now it seems as though there are like two timelines, right? Had the SEC never sued Ripple, maybe the MoneyGram Ripple partnership could have flourished in this same type of way. Another school of thought is that, uh, you know, the MoneyGram partnership was a almost like a I don't want to say a test run, but almost like. Uh, proof of concept for uh, lower value payments. Ripple was never going to target low value payments. Well, I mean, they could target everything, I suppose. But, you know, the big money is not in retail. It's institutional grade payments. And that's where Ripple's going to thrive. So now we're seeing this, okay? MoneyGram opening up custody wallets to be launched in the first quarter of 2024 and will specifically allow the use of stable coins to seamlessly switch between fiat currencies and digital currencies. This is going to be a game changer for uh, retail. Users will be able to convert fiat to stable coins and then quickly and easily and cost effectively send the stable coins around the world. Those who receive them will have the option, again using their wallet, to convert stable coins back to other fiat currencies, uh, to cash in fiat currencies. They will only need to go to one of the company's 347,000 offices if they need to do so. Then again, last year, MoneyGram launched a fiat on an off-ramp service for digital wallets, which already allows them to cash out of fiat currencies in more than 180 countries around the world. But, you know, this is going to be a game changer, I think, for uh, retail because now retail has the power to basically, you know, in a mainstream capacity, I mean, we've already... When you watch cryptocurrency videos on YouTube every day, guys, we are at a different level, okay? I don't consider us in this mainstream uh, us, um, group. I'm talking about your moms and dads, your cousins, the people who don't listen to cryptocurrency videos every day, the person who, uh, you know, just wants the technology to work. They're going to be able to go to MoneyGram, use cryptocurrency unbeknownst to them. I'm sure in a lot of cases, 
And, uh, you know, that is what's going to spur on crypto adoption and really kind of foster this type of adoption. Now, this is happening on the Stellar blockchain. Uh, some have criticized this. I mean, they were hoping that maybe we would see some kind of a development here with Ripple. Uh, but alas, MoneyGram now partnered with Stellar and Circle. Chad Steingraber here also posting this tweet from Alex Holmes, the CEO at MoneyGram, explaining the technology. Guys, listen to this. Uh, crypto seamlessly through um, their non-custodial wallets and, and the Stellar network into uh, the fiat world and back again. And we've been able to do that successfully through uh, USDC stablecoin and in partnership with Circle. And we found that um, consumers really value that service. And we've been able to do that uh, using our, our standard KYC processes that we use in the in the fiat world. And we feel like that's been a great balance between uh, the two worlds and is giving consumers uh, new uh, new avenues to uh, to move money. How fast can you actually get this to be used and used at scale? What are the hurdles that you'll face in between? Yeah, it's a great question. I think your, your last segment was, was right up the alley on it, which is just around you know legislation. There clearly needs to be more government regu you know, regulation, legislation, um, straightforward understanding of, of what the realm of the possible is for, for crypto. Um, you know, at this point in time, our, our new wallet that we're launching is is very basic in its in its in service, but it's also really unique and very cool in that sense because it's going to enable a consumer to take fiat, put it into stablecoin, hold it in their wallet, and withdraw it at their at their need uh, anywhere in the world uh, through the MoneyGram system. Doing that in a KYC way, um, you know, I think has many advantages over what's happening today. Um, the ability to you know think about on ramps and off ramps from both digital KYC and physical KYC, uh, and the ability to move uh, through the system seamlessly so that consumers can better time the delivery of service, consumers can better time the delivery of funds, um, you know really changes that paradigm. And so I think what's going to happen over time as you know crypto continues to find ways into the mainstream market. The more that we're in the space today, the more that we're playing with it, the more that it's an add-on and a built-on to our current system, the more value it's going to create over time. And I think consumers will begin to uh, adopt that and see that um, as markets begin to change and shift. So consumers are going to adopt it. And over time, it's just going to be the norm. And, uh, you know, like I say today, you know, we know what is happening uh, behind the curtain, so to speak. But, uh, you know, the mainstream, it's not about the mainstream understanding the technology or caring about what coin is being used or anything like that. It's about just the technology working. And once we get to that uh, critical mass, okay, that threshold, the floodgates will open as per Chad Steingraber here, and then the rest will be history. So some important news here, I think. Uh, and we're going to see probably a lot more of this kind of thing. Wanted to thank Michael uh, for posting that. Now, Ripple partner Flutterwave, they've just cultivated new technology talent in Nigeria with Cap Gemini support. Now, Cap Gemini has a Ripple and Swift connection. We know Flutterwave is a Ripple enabled partner. And today they announced their plan to launch an inaugural engineering mobile uh, program in India with the support of Cap Gemini, a global leader in business and technology information services. So, Flutterwave's Nigeria and UK based engineering team will work with Cap Gemini's extensive technology talent in Bangalore to share industry best practices and nurture the next generation workforce. This collaboration will see Camp Gemini draw upon its deep domain expertise to enhance Flutterwave's product delivery via a new cloud service provider. In addition, Camp Gemini will play a pivotal role in Flutterwave's technology strategy by defining a clear target state and a detailed roadmap for seamless implementation. And Camp Gemini may help lay the foundation for Flutterwave's agile transformation journey and the adoption of cloud native solutions, enabling a vision to facilitate payments in emerging markets. So Emerging markets is, uh, you know, one of the big things that Flutterwave does, uh, mainly because they are located in Africa, and that is uh, one of the biggest emerging markets. Uh, so today's announcement reaffirms Flutterwave's commitment to empowering its engineers to build innovative payment solutions, as we know. Here's a quote. This engineering mobility program is the first of its kind in Flutterwave, and I'm happy to see it happen. It goes beyond collaboration with a global tech leader like Capgemini. It's about diversity, inclusivity, and the mobility of ideas to fuel continuous innovation. Uh, we cannot wait to see the incredible solutions this program will birth. I'm looking forward to seeing how our engineers will take their learnings back home and share their experiences with their teams as they continue building payment solutions for the emerging economies of Africa and beyond. So... Flutterwave continuing to build with the help of Ripple Connected Cap Gemini. So some great news there. And Corvallis, they've extended a partnership to assist Italian banks. So Ripple partner Finastra has extended its partnership with Corvallis, an IT services provider in the Italian financial services sector. The partnership will support Italian banks with their payment transformation journey. The collaboration extends the scope of Finastra's SAAS digital banking solution, Essence, 
to include Finastra Payments to go uh, and Global Pay Plus, a functionally rich payment hub solution. So Corvallis now, Ripple enabled through Finastra, they have implementation experience and they offer uh, complementary solutions for uh, things like anti-money laundering, payment and settlement and fraud management. So with this partnership, Italian banks must comply with the upcoming European instant payment regulation and modernize outdated and complex IT infrastructures by facilitating SIPA and international payments. Now, I recently did a video on SIPA and RippleNet adoption, which I will link up here. Uh, uh, GM Pietro Vavasori, business solutions director at Corvallis, said our partnership supports the imminent entry into force of the European regulation on instant bank transfers in euros, which will make instant payments mandatory without additional costs. This requires a radical overhaul of current often temporary solutions that are not suited to support the expected increase in instant payment transfers, which will gradually replace ordinary transfers. So he's realizing, you know, the the, the systems are modernizing with the SEPA integration, obviously, uh, ISO 20022 coming down the pipe too. Full integration for that is uh, supposed to be November of this year. So a lot of different uh, systems being put in place to modernize the financial infrastructure. And these companies are relying on, uh, you know, these big Ripple enabled companies. I mean, namely Temenos, Finastra, ACI, uh, just to name three. But, uh, you know, working together to modernize the system, of course, DLT technology, the back end of that and Ripple connected to so many of these big players. As payments have evolved, the introduction of additional application modules and integration layers have led to complex, layered, and difficult to manage architectures. Finastra's payment solutions help to simplify this complexity by eliminating existing legacy payment silos. So that is a big part of this. RippleNet interoperable to uh, you know get rid of the old uh, Swift type systems, streamlining processes and enabling access to new market opportunities. So that is big news there, guys, coming from Ripple partner Finastra, now connecting to Corvallis in Italy. So payments, I mean, European banks looking to onboard, of course, the infrastructure is just getting more technical connectivity is key for a lot of this. But on the other hand, you know, Ripple is doing both. I mean, they're banking the unbanked. And so, you know, when we got that news, I mean, some were speculating that XRP transfers could go wireless that you didn't actually need or not wireless, but you didn't actually need the internet to convert XRP. I think it was Matt Hamilton who came out and basically said, no, that is incorrect. I mean, you can do the transfer, but eventually you do need that internet connection at the end of the day. Well, guys, maybe not anymore. Check this out. I've got a few new innovations here that I want to share with you guys uh, from some of these Ripple X developers. Okay, ISO 20022, let's do it posting this first. Using XRP without internet access. And guys, it's demonstrated right here. I want to play you guys this clip because this is really cool. Check this out. Ripple Mobile is designed to improve CBDC and Ripple accessibility in low-tech markets without internet access. Today, I'll go over the different features of Ripple Mobile. Registration. Users can register their numbers with Ripple Mobile by dialing the USSD extension. This works regardless of the phone they use and without internet access. Users are presented with a USSD menu, and once they respond with option 1, they are requested to select the secure 4-digit PIN. Once they put in their 4-digit PIN, the account creation process begins, and once completed, they will receive a welcome SMS with more details of next steps. Check balance. Once a user has been registered, they can dial the USSD extension and will be presented with a menu of different options to choose from. After selecting option 1 for account balance, they are requested to input their PIN for verification. After a few moments, they will retrieve an SMS detailing their account balance. Get account info. Registered users can dial the USSD extension to receive a USSD menu of options. Once get account info is selected, they will input their 4-digit PIN for verification. Once verified, they will retrieve a USSD message displaying their wallet address, balance, and other info. Get transaction history. And registered users can dial the USSD extension and retrieve a menu of options to choose from. Once get transaction history is selected, they will be requested to input their 4-digit PIN for verification. Once verified, they will retrieve an SMS detailing a summary of their transaction history so far. Send XRP. When a user wants to send XRP to another user, they go through the familiar process of dialing the extension. They then select Send XRP from the menu and are requested to input the recipient's mobile number. Then they are requested to put in the amount of XRP they would like to send and they verify this transaction with a 4-digit PIN. After they have completed that, they will receive an SMS confirming their transaction has been successful or not and the recipient will also receive an SMS that they have received money in their wallet. That concludes our Ripple Mobile demo. Thank you for taking the time. So there you have it, guys. Check this out. He's using one of those old IKEA dumb phone, as he's mentioning up here, to transfer XRP. Now, clearly, 
This is not using uh, Wi-Fi technology because at the time that these types of phones were released, well, internet was not available on telephones. They were using uh, cell networks at that point in time. So where is this from? I know some uh, are wondering, you know, okay, is this real? What, what the heck? He's just pressing numbers. And uh, I mean, they, they, they could film anything really. But guys, this was from the Ripple CBDC Innovate 2023 uh, challenge. Okay. So Ripple CBDC Innovate wrap up. This was a company that uh, did, what was it called? Ripple Mobile. Okay. Down here, an innovative solution for low tech markets that improves the accessibility of CBDCs by enabling the transfer of XRP from one phone to another without internet access. So it now has in fact been confirmed. You can transfer XRP without the internet and how they do that guys, essentially old telephone networking systems. Okay. Financial ledger application network using the XRP ledger and radio networks. This is huge financial ledger applications network. So this is off grid ad hoc radio network using the XRPL with uh, VHF or UHF AFSK and satellite. Uh, here you can see a little demo here, transferring XRP, uh, user access terminal. So they're actually using signals, radio frequencies to be able to do this. And so all the technicals are described down here. Another great tweet from ISO 20022. Let's do it. And a video demonstration down here that I want to show you guys. Watch this. The end result is a financial radio data network that can be deployed and maintained for a tiny fraction of the cost of traditional cellular data networks. Because our protocols run on a wide range of equipment, supply chain problems and the use of specialized or proprietary equipment can be avoided. Since all the equipment was chosen for low power consumption, large national networks can be rolled out rapidly without the requisite infrastructure required in traditional networks. Finally, we propose the use of specialized user interface terminals to allow payments both within a village and internationally without the need for smartphones or other expensive end user equipment. By having a common and simplified user interface, people of all levels of technical competency can use CBDCs as easily as an ATM machine. So this is kind of a demo prototype. It is actually transacting on the XRP ledger with real XRP cryptocurrency using the radio sets and the protocols. Now the user interface is kind of a temporary construct. It was just built in order to facilitate the demo. Uh, our next uh, push will be on building a much nicer and friendlier user interface with, that would enable all the features of the XRPL. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and connect. So at this point, the network has completed the Diffie-Hellman key exchange and has initiated the AES encryption during the transport. And at this point, it's going to go ahead and just get the balance for the account that the uh, terminal is using and then send that balance over to the machine via the VHF radio. So I'm going to go ahead and send 10 XRP from the terminal and you can see the Zoom wallet underneath. It shows 9,000 XRP. So we're actually sending to that wallet through the radio network. So you will see the balance of that wallet actually get updated by the 10 additional XRP. So the transaction that was posted from the radio network has now been applied to the XRP ledger, and we'll see the balance on the Zumwalt update by 10XRP. So it's important to note that this is a full duplex uh, time division multiple access protocol. So both uh, nodes have an equal opportunity to speak. And I guess the demo gets cut off there, but guys, you see what they're doing here. They want to put XRP in the hands of everybody on planet Earth. And so, I mean, if you come from a community like this, banking the unbanked, where uh, obviously internet access is probably not as prominent as in the Western world. How are they going to do that? Radio frequencies enabling XRP ledger technology. And again, you heard it here. This is for central bank digital currencies. They wanna get those in the hands of everybody. Guys, this is why Ripple has been working with central banks on CBDCs. The powers that be want us on central bank digital currencies. They want everybody on central bank digital currencies. And so communities without internet access, how are they gonna do it? Well, guys, this is how, this is why Ripple is having these innovate conferences. This is how, uh, you know, companies like Ripple Mobile are innovating using old school technology to facilitate cryptocurrency transactions. So no, it's not a rumor, it's not a myth. You can in fact transfer XRP without an internet connection, without having to connect to an internet connection eventually. That I think was the big differentiator. They want everybody around the world to be using the XRPL in some way, shape or form. So then the question becomes, what's your crypto portfolio look like? And do you think you have enough XRP? Do you think you're diversified enough? I know what I'm doing this time around and it's very, very different from the last crypto bull run. I have learned my lessons and I'm going to be maximizing profit with my patrons, patreon.com slash working money channel. If you guys have any questions, I do have a direct form to ask me questions on Patreon too. So for only $5 a month, you can follow my trades this time around. That's just my opinion. Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.